time this morning to, to worship you, Father, and to glorify your name. We know that it's in doing that that it causes our lives to never be the same. Father, as we have drawn closer to you, you have drawn closer to us, resulting in it, in it being less of us and more of you. Have your way in this service today. You are a generous God, Father, and may your generosity, may that spirit, Father, may they capture that spirit of generosity today as we minister your word. And let not one person walk out of here today the same way that they came in. And Father, we're going to give you all the glory for all the good that comes out of this service today. In Jesus' name, and everyone that agrees with that prayer, shout it. Amen. Amen. I want you all to say hello to a family member today. Someone is sitting near you or standing next to you. Uh, just introduce yourself, say hello to them, give them a big hug, and then you all can be seated. Great job, choir. Great job. Great job. Great job. Make sure if you don't know them, introduce yourself. Thank you, gentlemen. Make sure if you don't know them, introduce yourself. All right. Praise God. How many of y'all met someone or introduced yourself to someone that you didn't know prior to coming in today? All right, praise God. I really want us to start, start seeing each other as a family. Are we a family? We've got to see each other that way and then treat each other that way. Just think about it this way. If you walked into your grandparents' house, would you just walk in and not speak to anyone? What Matter of fact, what would, how would your grandmother respond to that? You'd probably get ready to get, get, get hit upside the head or something, right? Just think about that. Don't come into God's house and not speak to your brothers and sisters. Can we all agree to be that way towards each other? All right, praise God. Well, today is week six. six. This is the final week uh, of our Connect 40 campaign or our 40 days of community. I think the subject that we're ending it on today is just so appropriate because it is such the character of God. I want to welcome our online viewing audience today. If you're following along, you can follow along on the YouVersion Bible app. All of the notes are right there today. Don't miss this. This is a message today that you'll have to catch. I mean, you know, certain things are taught, but then other things are caught. You'll have to catch this today. I believe if you keep your spirit wide open, this is an area that God wants all of us to grow in, and I believe he's going to challenge all of us on today. And so uh, today's subject is contagious generosity. How I many know giving is contagious? Now, I can already tell people are getting tightened up as soon as I said generosity. Just relax. We don't want anything from you. Just relax. <laughs> Baby, take the, take the checkbook back to the car. Just relax. All right? Throughout this booklet, we've been in this series of 40 days of community. We've talked about living connected. We've talked about partnership. We've talked about building relationships, growing together, and serving connected. We've learned how to deepen the sense of community in our church family, particularly through small groups. I know I've had a great time with the guys on Wednesday nights. I know the ladies are having an awesome time in the worship center as well. Then we've also learned how to reach out to the community around our church. Yesterday we went out and we didn't ask for anything. I mean, you know, people don't like churches that beg. So we went out into, into the community to give, and I'll talk more about that on next week uh, during our week recap once we get all of the numbers in. But it was a great blessing. I want you to listen today because community, we're going define it, to define it a little differently than the way most of us learned it. The word for community in the Bible is the word fellowship. How many of y'all have ever heard that before? Raise your hand if you've ever heard that. The word for community in the Bible is fellowship. Well, let's take a little deeper dive. Let's look at it. Fellowship is what we have been talking about this entire time. I know for me, I did not want to pastor any longer if all it was was coming to a building and leaving. How many of y'all are tired of that type of church? Right? I want to pastor a church where we build relationships and we do life outside of church on Sunday. All right, and that's important to me as a leader. I believe it's important to God as well. 
fellowship is derived from the Greek word koinonia. And this is in your outline if you're following along on the YouVersion Bible app. You'll also see it up on the screen. Koinonia is translated as not just fellowship, but it's translated as community, contribution, and generosity. Isn't that interesting? All of these are essential elements of fellowship. If we're going to have fellowship together, then we must have a sense of community. I mean, there's one thing to just do something together, but we get nothing out of it. That's what church has been a lot of times. We do something together. I mean, we're all in here, but we're not fellowshipping. We're not doing koinonia right now. Can everyone understand that? All right, watch this now. There must be a contribution where we make contributions into each other's lives. There must be generosity. We cannot have community without generosity. We cannot enjoy community without participation. I mean, it's one thing to attend this church. It's another thing to participate in the vision of this church. So I'm trying to build something here. So you're not a part of this community until you participate with the community. Is that clear? All right. So we cannot enjoy community without participation, contribution, and generosity. Go with me to Philippians chapter 4, and let's read verse 15 out of the Living Bible. Philippians chapter 4, verse 15, the Living Bible says, as you well know, when I first brought the gospel to you, the church at Philippi, and then went on my way, leaving Macedonia, Macedonia, only you Philippians became my partners in giving and receiving. You understand what Paul is saying? You all became a part of my community by partnering. How did he know they were partnering? Because they were giving and receiving. Let me tell you something, folks. Giving and receiving is the opposite sides of the same coin. How I many know you cannot have a quarter without heads on one side and tails on the other side? How I many know that's fake money if it doesn't, if it's not heads on one side, tails on the other side? I got a revelation for you today. You should always be giving and you should always be receiving. Ooh. Always, every day. I mean, you don't have to just get paid on payday. You can get paid seven days a week if you become a giver seven days a week. So Paul said, there was no one in my community, no other church did this but you. Go to 2 Corinthians chapter 8. I pray that you catch this today. 2 Corinthians chapter 8, I'm going to read out of the Living Bible, verses 1 through 4. It says 2 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 1. Now I want to tell you what God in his grace has done for the churches in Macedonia. Through, though they have been going through much trouble and hard times. How I many know oh, life happens to everyone? Anyone ever been through much trouble and hard times? Notice it didn't say trouble, it said much trouble and hard times. Anybody ever been through anybody? been through a situation where your trouble seems like it's in trouble? Or am I the only one that's ever been through stuff like that? I'm talking about when it's bad, right, and you can't see your way out. That's the level that they're going through. He says, these churches here uh, in Macedonia, now remember, uh, the Philippians took up an offering for this church at Macedonia. Everybody clear? Watch this now. Now I want to tell you what God in his grace has done for the churches in Macedonia. So the churches in Philippi had to be generous to do something for the churches in Philippi. Can you all see that? I'm sorry, I said that wrong. The churches in Philippi had to be generous to do something for the churches in Macedonia. Is that accurate? So God wasn't coming down from heaven. God had to use someone. So in other words, those students at Powder Springs Elementary deserved, they deserved clean restrooms. But God couldn't paint the restrooms himself. Watch this now. Though they have been through much trouble and hard times, they have mixed their wonderful joy with their deep poverty. 
How many know you're in a whole lot of faith when you're in deep poverty and you still have wonderful joy? Now you're over in something called the fruit of the Spirit. Now you're saying, even though I'm in deep poverty, my God is still good. And because I know he's still good, I can have joy in my deep poverty because I know I won't stay this way forever. Can I just give anybody, get anybody to express an ounce of joy this morning? Okay? So I want this to be clear for you. So we have... Uh, the, we have mixed their one. They have mixed their wonderful joy with their deep poverty, and the joy and the result has been an overflow of giving to others. They're in deep poverty, but their joy has caused them to overflow in their giving to others. They gave not only what they could afford, but far more. How many of y'all? You should never judge your giving based off of what you can afford. Because sometimes it's your giving that allows you to afford the stuff that you can't afford right now. Oh, I'm preaching better than anybody saying amen in here. Watch this now. They gave not only what they could afford, but far more. And I can testify that they did because they wanted to, not because of nagging on my part. This will never be a begging church. This will never be a church, well, if you don't, we won't. How I many know I hated attending that, ch attending that church, and I don't want to lead that kind of church? Paul said, I know you did it because you wanted to. Every ounce that you ever give should be because you want to and not because somebody begged you to. Come on, somebody help me this morning. Right? And if a church has to beg you, I would not give to anyone any church, any organization, any institution that is nagging me and begging me to do something. They begged us to take the money so that they could share in the joy of helping the, Christ the Christians in Jerusalem. They begged us to take the money. So this is something they wanted to do. We cannot have community without generosity. We cannot complete our study on community community without looking at how to be more generous with each other. Folks, for us to serve such a giving God and a loving God, Christians can be some of the tightest people you ever meet in your life. Oh, Lord. Why does God want us to learn to be generous with each other? Let's look at seven principles today very quickly. Seven incredible benefits to our lives when God says we are generous with other people. Notice what I did not say. I'm not getting ready to pass a bucket around, right? I didn't, I'm not using this to set up a big gift giving to the church today. I'm using this to set up big giving to each other in the church. Number one, generosity builds community. See, I, I, the way I used to hear this message, at the end, there was going to be an offering for some need in the church. Right at the end of this message. I'm telling you, there will be, let me just calm you down. There will be no special offering at the end of this message. Oh, you all said amen to that, though. Clapping, all kind of stuff to that. Number one, generosity builds community. Generosity builds community. Look at Proverbs chapter 11, verse 24 and 25 of the Passion Translation. It says, generosity brings prosperity, but, but withholding from charity brings poverty. Those who live to bless others will have blessings heaped upon them. That word heap means piles upon piles upon piles. And the one who pours out his life to pour out blessings will be saturated with favor. Matthew 6, 21, the Passion Translation says, For your heart will always pursue what you value as your treasure. For some, that's clothes. For others, that's cars. For others, that's hair. For others, that's nails. For others, that's toes. For some, that's God. Sure is quiet in here today. 
Wherever we put our time, money, effort, energy, investment of ourselves, that's what's going to attract us. Wherever we put our time and our money, that is where our heart is, period. How many know when you cannot afford to honor God with at least 10%, that's because your heart is somewhere else. Wherever your treasure is, your heart is going to be there. Giving or generosity builds community. Look at Acts chapter 4, verse 32, the Passion Translation. I'm so excited this morning. Man, I'm so excited about what God is getting ready to do in Linked Up Church. I don't know what to do. Somebody's going to get blessed today. Acts 4, 32, Passion Translation says, all the believers were one mind and one heart, all of them. Selfishness was not a part of their community. I curse selfishness in the community of Linked Up Church now in Jesus' name. Selfishness was not a part of their community. How do we know that? For they shared everything they had with one another. Everything they had, they shared with each other. The first Christians were very famous for their generosity. What's mine is yours, and you can share it with me. It was voluntary. It was not communism. Listen to this. Communism says what's yours is mine, and I'm going to take it. How many know that's also dictatorship? Christianity says, what's mine is yours, and you can share it with me. Isn't that good? Number two, generosity is the antidote to materialism. A lot of people can't give because they value how they dress more than honoring God. How many know materialism is a disease? Anytime you buy something and you don't take the tag off of it to wear it one time so that you can take it back, how many of you know you have an issue? The more generous we are, the more it defeats materialism in our lives. Every time we take 10% off the top, we're saying, God, you're more important than Michael Kors. We're saying, God, you're more important than Gucci. You're more important than Fendi. You're more important than my Jaguar. You're more important than my Ben. You're more important than anything in my life. And I'm going to take the best of what I have because you've given me the best of what you have. And I'm going to honor you right off the top with that. Matthew 6, 24, the Passion Translation says, How could you worship two gods at the same time? You will either hate one, now this is clear language here, and love the other. Or be devoted to one and despise the other. You can't worship the true God while enslaved to the God of money. Strong language there. But how many know when you can't give anything to God, the scripture says you hate God. Now, I know you think I'm talking about an offering, but how many know if I bless a human being in this service, I've given to God? This scripture is very clear. If we're going to build community, then we have to defeat materialism. We have to hate money and love God. Because you can't do both. I just said it, the, the reversal. I mean, when I hate money, it just means I don't esteem it more than I do God. And one of the greatest ways to do that is every time God increases you, take his right off the top. Man, this, is, this enthusiasm today is, whew. Number three, our faith is strengthened. Our faith is strengthened. We're talking about seven benefits of being generous here. Our faith is strengthened. Look at 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 13. Passion translation says, for as your extremely generous offering meets the approval of those in Jerusalem, we're still talking about that same offering. 
It will cause them to give glory to God all because of your loyal support and allegiance to the gospel of Christ. Notice what it didn't say. Your loyal support of Linked Up Church, your loyal support of the church, it's your loyal support of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Anytime you give, folks, you are never putting money in a building. You are never giving money to people. You are always sowing into the gospel of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and you are sowing into his kingdom. And anytime you sow into his kingdom, you can expect a harvest of return on your giving, whether the people that you gave it to do right by it or not. Because you sowed it into the kingdom, you will get more back than you ever God is a generous God. He's generous, generous with us, and he wants us to learn to be like him by being generous with other people. 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 6, the Passion Translation says, Here's my point. A stingy sower will we reap a meager harvest. But the one who sows from a generous spirit, notice spirit and not flesh. Your flesh is what keeps you from sowing. Your spirit is trying to get you to sow so that you can get back everything that God wants you to get. Souls from a generous spirit will reap an abundant harvest. Whatever we give out in life, we are going to get back. And whatever we give out, we're going to get back to a greater degree. Now, there are two types of people in the earth. Let's see who we are. They are givers and they are takers. Takers are always unhappy people. Look around this room. See who's smiling and see who's not smiling. The most giving, the most generous people in life are always giving their time, giving their energy, giving their resources, and helping other people. I've never seen so many people so happy painting smelly, stinky elementary school bathrooms in my life than I did on yesterday. Happiest people in the world. You know why? Because they were giving of their time. They were saying that I'm going to take time out of my day and do something special for someone else. How I many know oh, God's going to reward them? Even though they sold time, watch they get all kind of resources back. The happiest people are the most generous people. How I many know oh, you can always tell a tight person when you see them? Jaws tight, frown on their face. Come on, somebody. Somebody know what I'm talking about, right or wrong? Soon as you say hello to them, why are you saying? They always think you want something from them. I'm glad we don't have any tight people in Linked Up Church. I said, I'm glad we don't have any tight people in Linked Up Church. I'm glad I've got a happy, generous church in Jesus' name with a bunch of smiles on their faces. Givers are the happiest people on the planet. 2 Corinthians chapter 9, 8 says, Yes, God is more than ready to overwhelm you with every form of grace so that you will have more than enough of everything, every moment, and every day. Everything and every moment of every day, more than what I need? He will make you overflow with abundance in every good thing you do. God says that if you will practice generosity, being generous with the people around you, he will make it up to you by giving you everything you need, plus he'll give you more than what you need. Let me tell you, the only reason God will give you more than what you need is so that you can share it with somebody else. Man, I'm working hard this morning. Did you all catch that? The only reason God will do it. It's the only reason. The issue is never with God, can he get it to you? It's can he get it through you? And if he can trust you to get it through you, then you'll become a funnel of his blessings to other people. 
But how many of you become a dam and it stops at you? Now, I'm getting ready to change culture shift. I'm telling you publicly, listen very carefully. At Linked Up Church, we don't believe in fundraising. I don't want some needle up on the screen, thermostat on the screen. I don't want a pastor's offering, the nurses guild, uh, So I need a little bit of amen in here today, right? If everyone would do their part, we don't have to do fundraising. Let me tell you what I believe in. I don't believe in fundraising. I believe in faith raising. If we can just raise your faith, how many know everything will take care of itself? Guess what? We're not waiting on God to purchase that land over there. God's waiting on us. Oh, somebody missed a good place to shout right there. Generosity is an investment. Luke chapter 16, verse 9. The Passion Translation says, It is important that you use the wealth of this world to demonstrate your friendship with God by winning friends and blessing others. Then when the world falls apart, your generosity will provide you with an eternal reward. When you leave this earth, folks, we cannot take anything with us. Somebody asked me on yesterday, Pastor, when are you going to build you one of those big mansions? I said, for what? Can't take it with us. Next year, it'll just be me and my wife. Why, would I, why do I need all of that? So you can say, look at my house. How much space does one person need? How much can you use? How much can two people use? You ever heard of a term called stewardship? Why do I need 20,000 square feet for two people? So I checked them real fast. So we don't live that way, man. Can't take it with us. Each time we are generous with the poor, with a friend, with a neighbor, with other people, Anytime we're generous with our time, our money, our efforts, God says you're storing up in the bank of heaven. How do we store up treasure in heaven like Jesus said to? Go with me to 1 Timothy chapter 6, and let's look at verses 17 through 19. I'll read out of the New King James Version. 1 Timothy chapter 6, 17 through 19 says, Command those that are rich in this present age not to be haughty, nor to trust in uncertain riches, but put their trust in the living God who gives us richly all things to enjoy. Let them do good. Let them be rich in good works, ready to give, willing to share, storing up for themselves a good foundation for the time to come that they may lay hold on eternal life. You understand what he's saying here? When you give the people to God and to the kingdom, you're putting resources in a heavenly bank account. And you're storing up against the time to come. How I many know life happens to everyone? You know, you can make a whole lot of money this year. Next year could look completely different. But I mean, when you have resources in heaven, you're never far away from all of your needs being met. Let me give you an example of this. I'm not saying any of this to bring any glory to me, but I have never missed honoring God with 10% for the last 30 years. Not one time I've never robbed God. So a couple of years ago when we lost our job, guess what I went to? I said, God, I've got a lot of resources up there in heaven. We have no income coming in right now. I'd love to make a withdrawal on, an, on all of the giving. Whole year's salary is on the front porch seven days later. God touched a man down in Phoenix, Arizona, who had the resources and the means, called somebody else to find out what my salary was, and then mailed it. Now, even though a man sent it, how many know that money came from heaven? 
trying to show you how to protect yourself against what's coming. You got to put it where malls and rust does not corrupt. I'm preaching better than anybody in this church saying amen. You all getting anything out of this today? 30 years, folks. I've never had a need go unmet. Over 800 credits for for 30 years. God is faithful. I was just blessed last week with more money than I've given this entire year. Yeah. Folks, you can't beat God giving. I said you can't beat God giving. And listen to this, just so you'll understand. Don't please don't give me no glory. Don't clap for me. Give God the glory. But listen, we are the biggest givers in this church and has been, we have been since its inception. But I promise you, we don't make the most money in this church. Every year, I'm just teaching now. Every year I give God a raise which means I increase my percentage of giving. So I don't tithe anymore. The tithe is in there, but I'm way beyond that now. January 1, I'll increase it again. And I've just been playing this game with God. Let's see if you can, let me see if I can outgive you. And then I do that and he say, see, you can't outgive me. Show you other ways it manifests. We just brought my son a car for his birthday. Now it might be a second before he receives it, but we bought it for him. That's another story. Let me show you how it manifests. A thirty thousand dollar car, all we spent out of our pocket was nine thousand dollars. Because of a glitch in the computer where they marketed the car for a lot less than what it was on the lot for. So I go in with the advertisement. And they said, sir, we can't sell this to you at that price. The only reason I'm in this dealership is because I saw this advertisement. And that's illegal to advertise and not sell it at the price. That, sir, let, let me go get my manager. Go get your manager. Because you're wasting my time right now because I got it right here, buddy. I mean, we go back and forth for a while. They have to sell it to me at that price. Yeah. Comes back to you all kind of ways. How many of y'all glad you came today? Yeah. Come on, I said, how many of y'all glad you came today? Yeah. Number five, generosity blesses us. It not only builds community and defeats materialism and strengthens our faith and is an investment in eternity, but it blesses us in return right now. We don't have to wait to get to heaven, folks, to be blessed. God wants to bless you right now. Luke chapter 6, verse 38, the Passion tra Translation says, Give generously, and generous gifts will be given back to you, shaken down to make room for more abundant gifts, will pour out upon you with such an overwhelming, overflowing measure that it will run over the top. Your measurement of generosity becomes the measurement of your return. Isn't that good? Can anybody tell me from Serve Connected what the acronym for team stood for? Don't look back in your notes. Raise your hand if you can tell me what the acronym for team stood for. Raise your hand, raise your hand, don't guess. Stand up, sir. He's close. He missed one. Stand up. Come get this hundred dollars. Come on, get this hundred dollars. Pays to know that, see? You're welcome. God bless you, okay? Is there someone in here that you've made prayer every single Saturday doing 40 days of community? Raise your hand if you've not missed prayer. You haven't missed prayer? Come get this $100. Now, 
do me a favor. Put a praise right there. Somebody ought to give God, somebody should be rejoicing with them right now. Who can tell me the four purposes of Linked Up Church? Raise your hand. The four purposes. Stand up. What are they? Come get this hundred dollars. Be blessed. You're welcome. Y'all out there thinking now, boy. You never prayed in tongues in your life. You sitting out there now. Ibaba shaka ta ta. Eh se. Uba ba 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 ba. Seka. Who can tell me the five title messages up to this point? The five title messages up to this point. The first five weeks of Connect Four. 40 days of community. Week one, week two, week three, week four, week five. It pays to pay attention. All right, we'll go by that one. We just missed that one today. Look at this beautiful thing. Just walk in here right there, boy. What's What your name is, shorty? Is there anyone that's attended small groups all five weeks? Raise your hand if you've attended small groups. Both twins, come up here. Guess what? Guess what? They're twinning. <laughs> Winning. Now, let me teach you something, folks. Let me teach you something. You know, he just gave away five hundred dollars. I didn't give away nothing. I sold it. <laughs> See, you missed that. Watch this. Watch this. Way more will come back to me. By blessing them, they don't realize I blessed myself more. Somebody ought to give God a real good praise in this place today. Number six, let's come on down to home stretch. The blessing of giving. Look at Acts chapter 20, verse 35, the Passion Translation. I've left you an example of how you should serve and take care of those who are weak. Christ said, I left you that example. For we must always treasure the words of our Lord Jesus Christ. I'm sorry, Paul said that. Who taught, giving brings a far greater blessing than receiving. The most blessed people on the planet are the most generous. And we'll close with number seven for today. Generosity is imitating God. John chapter 1 verse 16, the Amplified says, For out of his fullness... The superabundance of his grace and truth, we have all received grace upon grace. Spiritual blessing upon spiritual blessing, favor upon favor, and gift heaped upon gift. So notice, God is a generous God. He doesn't just give you grace. He gives you grace on top of grace. He doesn't just bless you spiritually. He blesses you spiritually, and then he blesses you more spiritually. When God gives you a gift, he heaps more gifts on you. But you've got to understand, folks, whenever God does it, the first thing you need to pray about, God, is this for me, or are you trying to get this through me to be a blessing to somebody else? God is a generous God. To become like him, then we have to be generous. God is a giver. God so loved the world that he what? We can give without loving, 
but we cannot love without giving. Very interesting. Put that slide up on the screen. The word believe is used 272 times in the Bible. So God wants us to believe, right? 272 times. The word pray is used 371 times in the Bible. So God wants us to pray, right? But look at this. The word love is used 714 times in the Bible. So God wants us to learn how to love, right? But watch this. The word give is used 2,162 times because he wants us to learn how to be generous. 2 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 12, the Amplified says, For if the eagerness to give is there, see, if I have an eagerness, then it is acceptable according to what one has, not according to what one does not have. If it were me, I would never come to God's house and just take and not leave anything. I would never do that. I would never do that. How many of y'all are receiving right now? How many of y'all you know you need to partner with that? When you don't partner with that, then you're a taker. See how quiet it gets? It's a sobering reality. 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 7, the Passion Translation says, Let giving flow from your heart, not from a sense of religious duty. Let it spring up freely from the joy of giving, all because God loves hilarious generosity. Every time you give, whether to a person or to church, do it with a smile on your face, right? And, and, and enjoy it. Let the fruit of the Spirit, let the fruit of joy flow out of you. Let people know that it was more important and it blessed you more to bless them than it did them receiving it. Now, let's all stand to our feet and let's make this confession. And I want you all to think about, all of us know someone that's in need. See, there, there, here it is right there. I said, all of us know someone that's in need. And sometimes you need to give out of your poverty. Did you hear what I just said? Sometimes you got to stop thinking about you all the time because there's always somebody doing worse than you. And your breakthrough just might come from helping somebody that's a little lower than you. And I know you're thinking, I can't get any lower than me. Well, let me take you to some of these homeless shelters. I could always get lower. <laughs> Make this confession with me. Put your hand over your heart. Say this with me. I know, I know that everything I have, everything I have is, a is a gift from God. Say it like you mean it. I know, I know that everything I have, everything I have is, a is a gift from God. I would have nothing, would have nothing if, God if God was not generous. Was not generous. I, know I know that God, that God wants, me to learn wants me to learn to be just like him. I must remember that every time I am generous, it creates community and defeats materialism, and it strengthens my faith. I want to learn to be generous just like Jesus, giving thoughtfully and enthusiastically and voluntarily and cheerfully in Jesus' name. If you want that for your life, go ahead and give God glory for it right now. Come on, go ahead and praise God like you want that reality in your life. Now, I want to give you a challenge for this week, okay? I mean, y'all ready for this challenge? Okay, listen very carefully. I want to challenge you because this is not, it should be normal behavior for Christians, but guess what? It's not. I want to challenge you. This week, pay for someone's meal. Treat someone to lunch. 
All right. I heard one. All right. I'll take that. All right. I'll, all right. I'll take that. Pay for the car behind you in the drive through So in other words, if you're at Starbucks, Starbucks, ask them how much is the car behind me. I'll take care of that. And just tell them God loves them. If they ask who did it for them, just tell them God and tell them God loves them. Pay for the person's groceries in front of you. Now, I know you might want to look first. Okay, I can get that one. Because you don't want to get up there in your car. You can't get your own groceries. So peek first. Somebody say, take a peek. <laughs> Pay for the person's groceries in front of you. <laughs> Sow seed into a volunteer. And I'm talking about a volunteer at Linked Up Church that takes care of your babies, your kids, your youth out there on the parking lot. Wouldn't that be a blessing if you just rolled down the window and said, man, I appreciate you standing out here in the rain for me. The greeters welcoming you at the door. Just however God leads you. Stop being so tight. Or a nonprofit organization of your choice. Then last one. Help someone this week that you know might be struggling. Now, all of these are in the YouVersion Bible app, so you can't go home and say, I forgot. I don't know. I know we had a challenge this week. How many of y'all are going to obey God and do at least one of those? Come on, raise your hand if you're going to obey God and do at least one of those. Isn't this a great way to end 40 days of community? By being generous with each other. Okay? Let's all lift our hands to the Father, and let's just begin to worship him for a moment. While you're worshiping the Father, I just want to 